first thing I think about or the first thing I do is just make sure I'm comfortable, very comfortable behind the kit. Make sure that I'm equally spaced between me and that bass drum, which uh, is very important to me because where the, the uh, leg position is is very important. It's going to affect the way I play uh, the bottom half. The top half, you know, as far as the spacing, you know, if I, once I got the spacing between me and that bass drum, I know where the snare drum, where to place that snare drum. If I'm playing three rack toms, the, the first rack tom is like right in front of that snare drum because uh, when you roll around the kit, for me, it's all about the way it feels, you know, because there's such a thing as muscle memory and all that stuff. So I notice when guys play drum kits with racks and they have three tom toms, rack toms, the second rack tom is in the center of the bass drum, which is wrong. You know, it was never meant to be in the center of the bass drum, but you know, that's the way they want to play it, then so be it. But but then when they you know when they try to do anything fast and zip around the kit, you know, it gets to a certain speed, then they hit a wall. Because, you know, the kit is set up. Wrong. Uh, you know, a lot of young guys, you know, like Greg Clark who's here, uh, then there's Mike Mitchell, you know, Tony Royster, uh, who I mentored. Order. Um, then there's Thomas Pridget, um, uh, Chris Bailey, who's here, you know, uh, it's the younger guys, that, you know, uh, that, that really gets me going, it keeps me going. That's one thing I learned, you know, from listening to Louis and talking to Louis before he got out of here. Um, I remember, you know, every time I would play LA, if he was in town, he would come to see me play. And it would shock me, you know, you know, the great Louis Belson is sitting in the audience watching me play which where I, when I grew up, it was me listening to him and Buddy, you know, sitting in the audience, never think in a million years that it would turn out the way it turned out. Um, so I asked him, you know, like, what are you doing here? And he says, I came to listen to you. I'm like, what? You don't have to listen to me, I'm listening to you. And he looked at me, he, he got, I mean, dead face. And he says, Denny, that's what he called me, Denny, the minute you shut your ears, that's the minute you stop learning. And when he said that, I like that. You know, when somebody play a, a figure or a, a phrase or something, you know, something that you never thought about, or you may have played it that way, or play that phrase, but you never played it that way, then the light goes off. You're like, ah, oh, he gave me another way of thinking about this. And the whole thing of playing drums is using your imagination. If you want to become a drummer's drummer, you gotta use your imagination and you have to play what you feel. You know, some young drummers, they, they, don't, they haven't gotten that yet. They, they're too busy, you know, want to play all the chops first, which is learning how to run before you learn how to crawl. The correct way of doing it, which is what, from what I learned by all the masters, is like you have to learn how to crawl to learn how to run. That way, if you gotta play something simple, you know how to do that. You know, when you start off by, you know, like just playing everything fast and work well, um, playing something, you know, like real easy or, or playing a piece of music like you couldn't play with the stylistics when you can't play with a singing group because you're too busy chopping out back there. So therefore, you don't know how to play music. You know, if you learn how to crawl, at least you learn how to play music. And actually, that's what you're there for anyway. You're there to support the music. And it's not about you, it's about us. You know, like when I was on the, uh, when I worked with Parliament Funkadelic, it was like sometimes there were 16 people on the band. You know, so with that 16, I gotta, you know, make some musical sense out of it as far as like how to how to make it work with us, with 16 people. And then when I played with John Schofield, it was four, five, five of us. You know, John McLaughlin was three. You know, so Matt, no matter what it is, it wasn't it was it was never about me. Although the music sometimes lends itself for you to shine. But once you shine, then you learn to come back and, and support the music because now it's 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 somebody else's turn to shine. But if you're back there chopping out, you know the bass player or the keyboard player, you know, may play something you, you you're not hearing it. You know, which if you give some space, and you know when you have a a, key, a great keyboardist or great bass player or great guitarist, sometimes he'll take you down another alley, but you never hear it if you're back there chopping.